I uh, actually did my undergraduate a degree at Flinders University and uh, followed that with honours and a PhD. Uh, then I did a postdoc at the Australian National University in Canberra with uh, the, uh, one of the editors in chief, PNC Physics Dean, Professor Steve Buckman. And then uh, the Australian government have these fellowships called Queen Elizabeth II Fellowships, I guess the equivalent would be Royal Society Fellowships in the, in the UK. And I was lucky enough to get one of those and went back to Flinders to work with a guy called Professor Eric Weigong, who was uh, one of the leaders in Australian physics at that stage. And after that, Flinders gave me a job, and uh, I've been at Flinders in a tenured academic position since about the year 2000, and had my own lab since that time, and have gradually built that up to about three or four major pieces of equipment, thanks to uh, Australian Research Council funding. I have three main things I'm working on at the moment. The first is classical uh, electron scattering experiments uh, with both uh, molecular targets of interest to the environment and also biomedical targets. Uh, then the second thing I do is the same sort of targets but use positrons, the antiparticle of the electron. There's uh, a lot of uh, medical applications in terms of positron emission tomography and there are people trying to simulate what happens when the positron gets into the body but they actually need the fundamental probabilities or cross-sections that I measure in my lab and other people measure in their labs to understand what's really going on at the nanoscale. And the third thing I do is uh, I got sick of actually measuring these cross-sections and giving them to other people to use. So about five years ago I got into modelling atmospheric and astrophysical phenomena with the data I measure. I was, uh, because of my close association with one of the founding editors in chief, Professor Steve Buckman, I was invited onto the editorial board. And I believe that editorial board members should support the journal uh, that they are a part of. And so, in, well, on my aim would be to publish one or two papers a year in PMC Physics B because of that. And um, I think that basically is why I got interested, apart from a general commitment to open access, which we'll get to later. Yeah. Um, I, I know it has because I've had quite a few requests, uh, even though you can download it from the web, uh, the article itself, um, I've had quite a few requests for the data within the article, people not traditionally that I would come across, data modellers that I have had very little experience with, and I've probably had half a dozen new requests for access to the cross-sections we measure as a result of the article being in PNC Physics B. How those individuals actually got wind of the journal, probably due to your publicity campaigns, perhaps. I'm not sure, but um, certainly in terms of the end product, people being interested in what I measure, it's been a success. Uh, it's really the first open access journal that ever approached me to, to be involved in, and I really like the idea of open access journals because my university in particular is, and I think this is true for a lot of universities, are currently having financial difficulties and one of the first things that go are library subscriptions to research journals. And so for an upfront fee, you know that your article guaranteed to be out there on the World Wide Web until well past your life. So I think that's very important that your data will always be available for other people in other countries, particularly when uh, library subscription fees can no longer be sustained. I think it's a very important plus. One of the other things that I think uh, differentiates PMC Physics B from other journals is the fact that if I chose to, I could upload in that supplementary files all the relevant cross-sections I've measured on the web, and that would be a lasting data resource. Uh, data management is a big issue, and uh, for people, uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology have uh, many full-time employees just keeping their database up to date. And so by putting, having this facility available where you can put your data up on the web or plots of your data up on the web uh, readily available for any user, then, of course, it must facilitate better research. Uh, my support was it was nice to be asked to be on the editorial board. Uh, it's always nice to be asked to pay an honour to be on something that's prestigious as an editorial board. Uh, I had not had much experience with open access journals before that, and, and so the invitation got me interested and got me involved, read up about it and saw the potential for, as, for this medium as a way of making sure that any publication you have for a small upfront fee will go on in perpetuity whatever, on the World Wide Web or whatever succeeds in technology at the World Wide Web.
I think that is very important for science research in general.